Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I'm going to give you the best run-through guide on how to build a kingdom project slash jumper project in Call of Dragons. We're going to go through everything you need to know and a lot of important bits, and this is probably going to be a very eye-opening guide because I am going to talk about a lot of real things and there's going to be a lot of realistic expectations that are gone through or that we go through, I should say. So let's dive in to number one, which is by far the most important one is you need to know everything before you consider starting your own project. Yes, that means that you need to understand what it is to be a contributing member, what it is to be an officer, what it is to be a leader. And for those that are interested, I actually have guides on all three of these that I'm going to have included in the description and the pinned comment of this video, along with a few other resources as well that I'll mention throughout the way. These are things that, and I'm talking understanding that even more so at an officer and a leader level, knowing the kind of department portions that go into these things. Again, for example, knowing how to do diplomacy, knowing how to recruit, knowing how to handle internal affairs knowing how to troubleshoot problems when they occur, knowing how to kind of almost be a therapist to players and to know how to console them when there are situations, knowing how to uh, inform is another one. Communication is obviously a big one as well. And using good and having good soft skills is something that you often hear me mention here and there, but is is so prevalent it is almost a priority to be able to do these things which basically just means that you're good at talking to people and you are neutral in tone you kind of have this cool calm collected demeanor and it's something that i can guarantee you is very underrated when it comes to things that people may or may not say about being in a type of management position but what it means is that you need to know a little bit about a lot and at least have a baseline level of understanding. Most of the time, this comes with putting time into the game and actually going out and educating yourself, researching. It could even be learning under someone, right? Having a mentor of sorts, right? Someone that is a good leader and you can just work under them as a member and or officer and learn, right? Just like if you're going into a trade or you're looking to move up in a company, right? Sometimes you're able to pick the brain of a supervisor, of a manager, of a team leader, etc. So you can acquire more knowledge and more experience through your time being put in. So that's number one for me. And again, I have some videos on this and I'll, I'll touch on that, but Typically, this is something that you can't really do within a day. This is something you have to put time in, whether that's three months, six months, nine months, a year, you know, depending on your rate of consumption, it is important. Number two, you need to have a goal. You need to have goals, visions, and expectations, meaning you need to know what type of project you want to run. Do you want to just have one alliance? Do you want to have five alliances? Do you want to have seven? Do you want to have 20? Whatever it is, you need to figure out how many alliances you want. You need to figure out how you want to run things. For example, do you want to actually try to manage and support the entire kingdom where you assist in facilitating things like coming up with structures for Strongest Lord, for SLEs? Do you want to try and enact PvP rules across the kingdom? Do you want to try and share resources with other alliances? Like, Do you want to try and have kingdom-type expectations which requires a higher level of coordination and organization where you're trying to work with the other alliances outside of your projects group or alliances. This is important to do. Or do you not want to do anything like that and you just want to have, you just want it to be your alliance or your alliance and another and you guys are just going to kind of fit into whatever's happening in the kingdom. You're just going to do your own thing. You're just going to try and maybe power up or, you know, again, do you want to try and be the two top alliances? Do you just want one alliance and you just want to be the number one alliance of the kingdom? You need to figure out what you want to do before you ever consider starting a project, which means you need to research, you need to have a good understanding of what the expectations can be and should be depending on the number of alliances and depending on what you want to do in the kingdom. Do you want to do kingdom-wide stuff or do you just want to do internal stuff within your group and then just kind of fit into whatever the mold of the kingdom is going to be, right? So this is something that is, in short, really important. 
Number three is building your Discord completely first before you consider actually recruiting and almost officially starting anything. And I'm going to give you an example real quick of a shell. And I'll do more of a deep dive on this later. But I'm going to show you for now what it is if you want to have a, a Discord that works for you. So let's show you this real quick. Let me do this. And bam. I don't know if I have this selected. So if not, bear with me a moment. Here we go. So here's the Discord. And I'm just going to give you a brief shell of an example for minimum channels that you need in your project and give you a quick description of each. So you need to start here. The start here is really important because this is essentially just kind of a, a channel directory, right? This is this is good to have because it, it gives you an outline. Like I said, it's kind of a table of contents or a TOC where it will give players that are coming in a quick overview and rundown of what each of the channels that you have along with what are their descriptions and what can they find on there. Then you have an announcement channel, which is pretty standard. You should have, in my opinion, one chat channel. That's it. Just start off with one chat. The reason why is because it allows for your project to appear that it's good, healthy, and active. When you have all of your chat activity being funneled into one channel. So this usually can help with things like increasing social engagement on your Discord and makes it easier so you're not kind of breaking up and branching your chat activity into too many channels which can which can sometimes make it seem as though if those are not that active it could appear for people players that are joining that oh hey this project isn't necessarily that active right or there's just not a lot going on so my recommendation is start off with one chat channel having a sign off channel uh and again this is just a, t a template from from stuff i had in my uh, last project but Having a sign-off channel is important. A sign-off channel really, in my opinion, should be something that gives a quick overview synopsis, but also links to the main pieces and information that your project should have, so that way people can read up on what they can expect if they were to join. In addition, a sign-off channel should also be something that you have reactions for. Now, whether you just do a green check, whether you do something else, having something that shows you players can sign off that gives you an, a soft indication of hey these people are already on board is a great thing to do then you get into your positions channel positions is something where you should have information on what are the positions that you're offering and people can apply to so as an example you have uh like for here we just have a leader and officer right and again this is just a template example but you'll have a description of what some of the expectations are you will also have a application link that we have we'll also have a day in the life uh which is just some re resources and other reference points uh, managing an alliance leading an alliance same thing with officer brief description right you guys get the picture then you need to have a goals channel your goals channel is kind of what is your project's goals what do you want to accomplish in the project so that way players can have expectations of what they need to know and what they would see in the long term playing out being a part of your project and also seeing if they're going to be the right fit then you need a resources channel a resources channel for me is pretty simple i'm not big on having you know hundreds or tens of channels as an example because i often see that in a lot of project discords that i go into even a lot of kingdom discords i'm of the opinion that it's just a lot easier to summarize these things uh, compared to having a lot of others that you need because you just don't want to overwhelm people that are joining a discord you you want in the beginning a less is more approach which in my opinion is just perceived a lot better then you get to the recruiting channel it's important to have a recruit channel so that way you can have as an example a template if you're posting something on the cod official discord or other discords that have recruitment or jumper channels that you can post for call of dragons also having some type of template right that people can copy paste we have one here so it's just on a google doc uh, where it's coded and formatted so all they have to do is copy it and then paste it to the relevant channels. We also have other instructions such as, hey, maybe you invite some players, uh, maybe you're in other servers, right? You can recruit people that you're already playing with if you're on accounts to see if anyone's interested. And then you need a resume channel. A resume channel for me is a, a very vital and important because I think it shows a level of humility. I think it humbles you. And I also believe that being transparent is important. 
and it allows for players to see, well, what's your experience? What have you done or what haven't you done yet? And being able to have these things listed where you can see mine, I have like a general section. I have a Rise of Kingdoms, I have an Infinity Kingdom, and then obviously most recently I have a Call of Dragon section. But it gives you a little bit of an introduction to me, what I've done, and it also shows you the projects that I've done with some video references. So that way, if you want to go and watch those to see how those projects played out, you're more than welcome to. Um, again, I think the idea, it's not necessarily that people are hiding anything from anyone, but I do just think it's important to have that level of transparency. And then you have a town hall channel. Town hall is vitally important because I think you need to be able to have meetings with your groups. In addition, and this is, it, well, sorry, not in addition, but with the exception of also doing those things at a management level. We're just talking kind of baseline projects. So when it comes to including everyone, it's important to have town hall meetings, whether you do these once a week, once every two weeks, you want to be able to include, doesn't mean you have to do them right away, right? Especially if you're just starting, you really want to try and do town halls. I would argue if let's say you're a couple months out or you don't have a hard ETA, do them once every two or three weeks, right? And then once maybe you get within a month of doing the project, then maybe you go to once every week or once every two weeks. And then once you get to two weeks out, you do it once a week. Um, something like that. And then obviously probably on the day of, and then maybe you do it, you know, a couple days or something in a row or every other day, maybe within the first week as an example, when you land in, land in your kingdom, depending on uh, your availability. So doing something like this is important because it allows for players to come in. It allows for the leaders or leadership to give a summary or synopsis, an outline of what's happening, kind of what the next steps are. What are you doing for the day? What are you doing for the next couple days? What are you doing for the next weeks? And then it also allows for other leaders or officers to chime in if, if they want or depending on, you know, what your setup is along with then allowing for a Q&A, right? You want an open floor Q&A where you allow the community to ask questions, you allow them to be engaged. This is something that is really important. And so uh, my recommendation there is try to do these and get these set up once you get to a point where you are having enough players. Maybe that's 50, maybe that's 100 or more. And then, oops, be careful. And then you can kind of go from there. All right, now let's get back to the goodies here, and let's talk about uh, number four, which is recruiting. Recruiting is incredibly important uh, because obviously that's going to most likely be the bulk of where you get or find a lot of players to join your project. And this is pretty simple. Recruiting in-game, on Discord, on Facebook, on Reddit, on any, on any other type of social media, referring a friend, having other players help you out with recruiting, right? These are areas that you're going to go and always try to format your recruitment message that is appropriate to where you're going. And then also make sure that you're not spamming people or you're not posting things in areas where, um, you know, where you shouldn't be. Um, because again, you don't necessarily want to come off as, uh, you don't necessarily want to come off as spammy in a way, right? You want to really be uh, professional in how you go about approaching situations. Okay, uh, then we get to number five, which is filling positions. My recommend, and, and we're talking about management positions, leader, officer, departments, etc. You want to fill positions, uh, in my opinion, going top down. And this means that you want to try and fill leader positions first, before you fill officer positions, and then before you fill de uh, department positions. And this depends if you even want to run departments or not. Um, it really is just kind of up to each person or up to each project. But the reason I recommend that is because your foundation that you're building is based on the leadership that you're putting in place as your R5s first. Because bear in mind that what usually happens in projects or just in general is that your alliances are most likely going to follow the leaders that you put in place, right? Especially if they're good leaders or they're perceived as good leaders, they're going to eventually build up a level of trust, a level of respect, a level of uh, camaraderie within the alliance. And that's something that you want to try and bank on, right, for as much as possible. So that's why it's important to try and do those first. Now, for those of you, that are curious on, well, okay, boss, how do I go about vetting leads? How do I go about vetting officers? Well, what I am willing to do and, and, would, and more so would love to do is I put together this public doc that I'm going to be showing you here in a moment. So for anyone who is interested, you're more than welcome to utilize this, and I am happy to assist or help in vetting 
uh, any of your players, your your leads, if you're interested in just wanting, or if you would like a copy of this application, you're more than welcome to ask, and I'm happy to provide. And I'm going to show you this real quick. Again, it's pretty simple for what I came up with, but you're going to see here that, oh gosh, how are you doing there, killer? I got your nose. You got a lot going on. <laughs> um, but what you can see here is there is a public kind of B2 Alliance Leader application that I put together. And sorry, I just got to get your nose here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and we're going to scroll down. Sorry, got a little babyness here in the beginning. Uh, so you're going to see that it's pretty standard, right? It just kind of shows you region, Discord name, right? What's your time? Uh, there's a link to a video, which is a leader. It's the leader guide video that I have out on COD. Um, and I'll kind of show you that. Let me see if I can click on this real quick. So again, and this is not necessarily the public version. This is uh, there's because there's different things. So I'm showing you the, the full one. But you'll see here that it kind of links out to the video and you'll see, right? guide to being a lead so then you have some questions here on right expecting people to be in voice meetings and then you get to like the game section which is some questions that we have here um you'll also see as we continue to go down right kind of player base right why do you feel you'd be a good choice um you know you know what's important to you leading man or playing managing and then we have some scenario questions this is something that i actually started thinking about after my most recent project on trying to kind of ask competency questions for leaders because I think this would give us a better idea on how people go about approaching certain situations. And I'm still building this out. Um, so again, it could change, but I do think these are types of questions that would help a lot. And then we get into some project related questions like why, why do you wanna join this project over another, right? In this case, your project. I think this is a very important question to ask because if you can tell a lot by how someone answers this question. Um, and then this is just more of like, we expect all members of management, right? To uphold project goals, which is your goals, All right, This is just kind of them signing off that they have read and they understood that. Uh, and then we get to our next one, which is gonna be number six. Uh, I know I already talked about having a sign-off channel, um, and that's just something that, again, as I mentioned, I just believe is really important. Town halls I talked about. Being able to communicate and inform, and to me, I think the important bit here is really talking about things like soft skills. Um, this is the last one I'm really going to end on, because I think this is just really important, is the thing about soft skills, and I'm going to go ahead and just re-quote that here in a moment, because I just think it is, and it's something I talked about in a previous video, but soft skills are essentially... Soft skills are essentially defined as uh, our abilities to relate to how you work and interact with other people. Commonly noted soft skills include communication, teamwork, and other interpersonal skills. Employers, right, places of business, look for candidates with soft skills as these skills are hard, keyword hard, to teach and are important for long-term success. And that could... I mean, that's, a, I just think, a very textbook, but a great definition to explain the importance of just knowing how to talk to people. And that comes from a level of experience, maturity, and competency for how you interact with other human beings. And basically just not being an a-hole to people, right? That's kind of the short version of it, is just choosing to actively and proactively talk to people in a neutral, kind of a Switzerland-like way, but in a good way where you're not necessarily demeaning anybody, you're not trying to come across it in an ill-intended way, and you're able to navigate certain situations with how you speak to people, whether that's word choice, whether that's how you're vocalizing yourself in tone, these things are very important. And is probably, I would argue, the second most important outside of knowing everything or knowing having a baseline of knowing how to do everything before you consider starting. Soft skills to me, as a project leader, as a leader, and also and then to a little you know, as well as for leads and officers, is probably the is probably the most important thing they need to be able to do um, after having a baseline level of understanding on how to do a lot of these areas. So. That's going to actually do it for me. I'm about almost 20 minutes. And uh, thanks for my special guest. I hope that didn't bother anyone too much. And again, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm also curious for those of you who have done projects, right? Did you like uh, any of the points that I touched on? Did some of these points maybe help you out? Or you're thinking to yourself, man, these are things I could really use. Let me know anything and everything down below. That is going to do it for me. As always, until next time, I will catch you later. Or we will catch you later. <laughs>